from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of cultures, traditions, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Namaskar viewers, welcome back to another episode of My India. I'm your host Pratiksha Mishra and in today's episode, we're gonna offer you a glimpse into India's cultures, diversity along with the developments happening in and around the world. India's true magic lies beyond geography. It's the vibrant tapestry of diverse cuisines and emotional connections to street food. Recently, a national street food festival in Delhi celebrated this very essence, uniting thousands with local vendors and their delicious offerings. The event was an effort to support the indigenous vendors and to aware the world of its rich delicacies. Have a look. India is incredible, not just because the land is surrounded by water on three sides and uplifted on one side with hilly mountains, but because of its vibrant traditions and a wide variety of delicacies. From east to west and north to south, the country is blessed with mouth-watering cuisines representing the region's cultural beauties. However, one could not explore the vividness of the region without delving into the rich tapestry of flavours, textures and cultural experiences that one gets through street foods. Street food in India is more than just a quick bite. It's an emotion. It's a way to rejoice in their happiness. Keeping up the spirit in a bid to support the local indigenous street food vendors of India, a three-day-long National Street Food Festival was recently organized at Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium in the capital city of India, New Delhi. The event witnessed over thousands of people participating in the National Street Food Festival and appreciating the food served by practicing street food vendors. When you say street food, only one name comes to mind, India. India is the first, but Turkey has unique street food also, besides India. And that's why we think that we can have a cultural bridge through food between Turkey and India, and that's our mission. The three-day festival was filled with flavours, entertainment and a lot of memories for the people. From Nepali sale roti to Turkish pizza, everything has been the pull factor in the festival. The food festival invited street food vendors from across 28 states and union territories of India to participate in the event by setting up more than 120 stalls. A food vendor from the tribal community of Andhra Pradesh expressed how much love she received during the festival for their flavorful bamboo food dishes. हम लोग आंध्र प्रदेश से अरकुवेली आंध्र उटी बोलते हैं उसको आदिवासी लोग ज़्यादा इसको खाते हैं वहाँ पे वहाँ से हम लोग यहाँ पे आए थे इसको आप बैंबो बिरयानी बैंबो चिकन बैंबो फिश रेड चिली कबाब हम लोग स्टाल पे लगा हुए हैं यहाँ पे ये आदिवासी लोग पुराना जमाने में इनको बैंबो में रख के पका� during the festival, people buying food coupons came to the stalls to enjoy the authentic flavours of the states. From Shahi Kebab, Bihar's Litti Chokha, Andhra's Bamboo Rice and Boiled Bhutta to Varanasi's world-famous Chaat and Pista Kulfi, the festival had something for everyone. Furthermore, the event followed a series of cultural programmes, panel discussions and speeches by influencers who presented their views about street foods. I have come from here and I have eaten many things. But the biggest thing I have liked is two. One is a dollar chart and the other is a bamboo chicken. It was very unique and I have never seen it in Delhi. There are very different parts of India. So, every food is a must. Apart from Indian states, the 13th National Street Food Festival also had participants from countries such as Afghanistan and Nepal. The food festival was an effort of the National Association of the Street Vendors of India 
to bring together the promoters of local and traditional food. Nasvi also introduced an Android-based application, Street Sarthi, to help street vendors across the states reap the benefits of government schemes. So we feel that all cities should be inclusive and the street vendors should have a right to sell their goods and services with dignity. This street food should not be corporatized, it should remain with the street food vendors because it is also they also uh, promote the local culture and they also promote their livelihood through this street food. So uh, the idea is of organizing this kind of festival is that we bring in policy makers, we bring in uh, decision makers of the country and we bring in citizens you know, to make them all aware about the, uh, the beauty of the street food and also we provide a platform to the street food vendors so that they are able to understand how, how much they are liked, you know, how much they are appreciated. Events like these are essential to bringing attention to the importance of these traditional street foods which also present the country's regional legacies. They also provide a platform for vendors like these to make the world aware of India's diverse food culture and an opportunity to earn a fair wage. Moving on. Let's take you to the centuries-old Dargah of Sufi Saint Hazrat Qutub -e Alam in Saharanpur city of India's Uttar Pradesh, which is a testament to the living example of Ganga Jamuni Tehzeeb of India as people in large numbers gather to pay their sincere tribute to the saint. Have a look. For centuries, the tombs and dargahs have served as a popular pilgrimage destinations for both Hindus and Muslims. The key teachings of Sufism have always endeavoured to uphold unity and togetherness among the various communities and this practice endures even today. Around 40 kilometres away from Saharanpur city in India's Uttar Pradesh lies the Dargah of the most revered Sufi saint Hazrat Qutb e Alam. The Dargah is an absolute emblem of communal harmony as people with diverse faiths and from diverse backgrounds come together to offer their sincere prayers to the saint. The Dargah of Baba Hazrat Qutb e Alam is said to be around 500 years old and was once the cottage of Hindu saint Haridas who happened to be the greatest Indian poet and classical musician of his time. जो ख्वाहिशात भी होती हैं वो भी हमारी यहां के पूरी हो जाती हैं हमें कभी ये नहीं मिलने कभी किसी ने महसूस नहीं कराने दिया कि हम लोग हिंदू हैं या सिख हैं तो मुस्लिम आस्था ने भी क्यों हैं और कम से कम 22 साल से यहां के गुसल की सेवा मेरे पास है द 5 सेंचुरी ओल्ड दरगाह हैज एन एलिगेंट डोम शेप्ड स्ट्रक्चर विद स्पेशियस कोर्टयार्ड्स दैट आर मोर देन ऑफन ओवरवेल्म विद पीपल हु कम टू सीक स्पिरिचुअल गाइडेंस एंड सोलेस People often come to the shrine seeking solace, escaping the hustle and bustle of daily life to establish a connection with their inner selves. Moreover, the Dargah of the Sufi saint feeds thousands without discrimination by regularly holding free meal services or langars for the devotees. You have also Hindi in Hindi. You have also said a great song, Alak Das. आपका नाम था हिंदी शायरी में बड़े बड़े छंद दोहे चौपाइए बहुत आपकी लिखी हुई अलग दास आपका तखलुस था और ये जो आज जगह है ये भी बाबा हरिदास यहाँ रहा करते थे जब से ये हिंदू मुस्लिम प्रेम चल रहा है जब बाबा हरिदास की ये कुटिया हुआ करती थी पीपल फ्रॉम ऑल वॉक्स ऑफ लाइफ विजिट द श्राइन टू पे देर रेस्पेक्ट बाई बोइंग देर हैड्स ऑफरिंग फ्लावर्स laying chadars at the grave of the holy saint and praying for their own well-being. We are here for 20-25 years. This is our husband and his wife. We have a Guru Gaddi. We have a whole world of work. 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 For centuries, Sufi architecture has always served as a symbol of communal harmony, 
nurturing an enduring connection among diverse communities and promoting a sense of brotherhood in society. And now, some of the stories that made news recently. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated an international airport and renovated train station in the temple town of Ayodhya. Today, there are 15,000 crore विकास कार्यों का शिलान्यास और लोकार्पण हुआ है इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर से जुड़े ये काम आधुनिक अयोध्या को देश के नक्शे पर फिर से गौरव के साथ स्थापित करेंगे The newly inaugurated Maharishi Valmiki International Airport is named after Maharishi Valmiki celebrated Indian poet and author of the Hindu epic text Ramayan which chronicles the tale of the Hindu god Lord Ram whose temple is being erected less than a month before the grand Hindu temple opens India's northern town is buzzing with activity as finishing touches are put on a project seen as the centerpiece of Modi's re-election campaign Once a sleepy temple town in the most populous state of Uttar Pradesh, Ayodhya has received a new airport and roads in a 6 billion dollars facelift as Modi prepares to inaugurate the temple to Lord Ram, one of Hinduism's most revered deities. On January 22, Modi will pray for the first time before an idol of Lord Ram at the project which cost more than 20 billion rupees and where more than 4500 workers are laboring round the clock to complete the ground floor Buddhist monks and nuns gathered to offer prayers wishing for the long life of their spiritual leader the Dalai Lama in India's eastern Bodh Gaya town आज परम पावन जी के लिए दीर्घ आयु की प्रार्थना की गई बहुत परंपरा में ऐसा होता है कि जब गुरु प्रवचन देते हैं शिष्यों को शिक्षा देते हैं तो उसके बाद शिष्यों की परंपरा है कि दीर्घ आयु के लिए गुरु जी की प्रार्थनाएं करें उनको उपहार भेंट करें दी प्रेयर्स वर ऑफर्ड ऑन द फर्स्ट डे ऑफ द न्यू ईयर आफ्टर द दलाई लामा कंक्लूडेड अ थ्री डे टीचिंग सेशन The Dalai Lama who fled from Lhasa for asylum in India in 1959 has worked for decades to draw global support for linguistic and cultural autonomy in his remote mountainous homeland situated between India and China. While technology simplifies life, the burgeoning e-waste mountains loom large threatening our environment. However, Both the government and non-government organizations have risen to the challenge taking crucial steps to address this pressing issue. Let's delve into the journey of organizations that are continuously working to combat this global challenge. Take a look. Beat computers used in offices or mobiles used by common people or the electronic devices used daily in households in this era of modernization These gadgets are making people's lives easier but at the same time the massive amount of e-waste that is being generated across the country is posing a serious threat to the environment. However, a number of important actions have been taken by both government and non-government organizations to address the problem. For instance, Recycle Karo is a company based in India's Maharashtra that has been engaged in recycling of e-waste for over 10 years. The company manufactures metals which are rarely found in India like cobalt, sulfate, lithium, etc. by dismantling various electrical wastes on a large scale. The company is not only solving e-waste but is also manufacturing metals which are mostly imported from foreign countries humne lithium banana shuru kiya uske pehle tak 100% lithium import hota tha india mein china se ya japan se ya korea se import hota tha abhi hum yahan pe khud locally lithium bana rahe hain 
कोबाल्ट बना रहे हैं हम यहाँ पे आ, अभी हम टेंटेलम पेंटॉक्साइड बनाने का हमारा वी आर वेरी क्लोज एयर हम उसका प्रोडक्शन शुरू करेंगे तो पॉइंट है कि ये सारे मेटल्स हम इंडिया में बना सक रहे हैं और वेस्ट से बना सक रहे हैं तो ये हमारी बहुत बड़ी अचीवमेंट है लाइक रिसाइकिल करो अनदर कंपनी नेम्ड अट्रो बेस्ड इन रुर्की उत्तराखंड ऑल्सो मैन्युफैक्चर मेटल्स फ्रॉम ई वेस्ट This company extracts various metals like gold, silver, aluminium and copper from e-waste like discarded laptops, mobiles, televisions and refrigerators. ये जो e-waste recycle होता है उससे copper निकलता है aluminium निकलता है steel निकलता है tin निकलता है आपका silver निकलता है gold निकलता है प्लीज कीप इन माइंड कि इन सारे पदार्थों और धातु में इंडिया नेट इम्पोर्टर है इंडिया नेट इम्पोर्टर कॉपर में है इंडिया में नेट इम्पोर्टर टिन में है नेट इम्पोर्टर ऑब्वियसली गोल्ड और सिल्वर में है सो ई वेस्ट रिसाइकलिंग से वो नेट इम्पोर्ट भी कम हो रहा है इट इज ऑब्वियस दैट रिसाइकलिंग ऑफ ई वेस्ट कैन ऑल्सो कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू द कंट्रीज इकोनॉमी अकॉर्डिंग टू ग्लोबल ई वेस्ट मॉनिटर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी इंडिया इज वर्ल्ड थर्ड बिगेस्ट ई वेस्ट प्रोड्यूसर and the indian government is taking steps to make e-waste management better and making people get aware of this the e-waste management rules in india were enacted in 2016 and 2017 after this changes were made in it for which manufacturers were asked to use such technology so that the final product can be recycled apart from this The components used in electrical and electronics products should be made in such a way that less e-waste is generated. Under the new policy of e-waste management, a provision has been made to give incentives to consumer durable and electronic manufacturing companies to recycle e-waste. At the same time, the government is also running awareness campaign to improve e-waste. E-waste is an issue related to global warming and India is contributing greatly to it. Recently, India participated in the Climate Change Conference COP28 held in Dubai and shared its views on the international platform. हमने मिलकर ग्रीन डेवलपमेंट पैक पर सहमति बनाई। हमने लाइफस्टाइल फॉर सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट के सिद्धांत तय किए हमने वैश्विक स्तर पर रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी को तीन गुना करने की प्रतिबद्धता जताई ड्यू टू रैपिड अर्बनाइजेशन डिजिटलाइजेशन एंड कंटिन्यूस इंक्रीज इन पॉपुलेशन इन इंडिया ई वेस्ट इज ऑल्सो इंक्रीजिंग गवर्नमेंट एंड नॉन गवर्नमेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन आर ट्राइंग टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम एंड नाउ Some of the stories from the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. Meet celebrity French chef Dominique Corby. He has earned numerous medals from the French government for preparing French cuisine, including the Legion d'Honneur. His passion prompts him to travel the world over in search of quality ingredients. Based on Jay Fudo's recommendation, he paid attention to Fukushima's winter fishery. Jay Fudo is developing promotions to accelerate the export of Japanese food. Dominic Corvi visited Haragama Fishing Harbor in Soma City. It is a very familiar place for him. Tony, ano takidashi to ka, takusan ikimasu te dogoi nagata hei na. ものもなったんだけど、で、まあ今日見たらなんか戻ってきてるとなんか感じてますね。The seafood market is filled with positive energy. Workers at Fishing Harbor Haragama expressed confidence in the area's recovery. Chef Corby selects quality ingredients for his French cuisine. The best fish to eat in the winter is flounder. Fisherman's self-restriction protects it. After his return to Tokyo, Chef Corby managed to capture the essence of Fukushima's cuisine and prepare his own dish. Now Corby adds new flavors to his stock of French cuisine after his fishing trip to Fukushima.
the Tokyo Metropolitan Government organized Grand Cycle Tokyo in Odaiba, Tokyo for cycling enthusiasts. It was aimed to enjoy a beautiful landscape, clean fresh air, and accelerate to grow healthy life. Tokyo Governor Yuriko Koike announced the event's start and outlined its goal. Grand Cycle Tokyo Rainbow Ride これからスタートいたしますとにかくまっすぐ一心不乱に前を向かれるかもしれませんけれどもどうぞ心にも余裕を持ちながら今日一日楽しんでいただきたいと思います Tokyo Metropolitan encourages bicycling in a safe and healthful manner. Its goal is to encourage people to participate in sports at least once a week and leads a person with disability to accessible sports. Odaiba area has Rainbow Bridge and newly added Gate Bridge. These two bridges are landmark in Tokyo to attract local residents and visitors. A 32 km course and an 8 km course were prepared. 4500 cyclists participated in the pleasant breeze and stunning scenery including Olympic and Paralympic medalists as well as other cyclists adoption of safe riding is another crucial aspect helmet was compulsory for all cyclists enthusiasts with tandem bicycle which is designed for two riders also participated in the event people with physical disability also participated bicyclists enjoy the crisp clean air and picturesque scenery of autumn along with the contentment that comes with being a Tokyo metropolitan With the winter setting in early this year in Kashmir Valley the demand for traditionally Kashmiri fare has increased in the local and international markets Available in different styles and designs, the Kashmiri fairings are cherished among all ages. The International Fair and Day, celebrated a few days ago in Kashmir too, has added to the rising demand for this Kashmiri traditional attire, garnering these days. Take a look. The loose-fitted traditional attire fairing has remained a staple clothing for Kashmiris for centuries. Kashmiris believe the warmth, comfort and the unique aesthetic appeal Fairen offers is incomparable to any other clothing during winter. In recent years, the Kashmiri Fairen has garnered a huge demand across the country and world over. The International Fairen Day celebrated in Kashmir a few days ago has certainly given a boost to the local businesses dealing in this particular clothing segment available in different varieties and designs the kashmiri fairan has become a fashion statement these days बहुत सारी वैरायटी है इसमें कपड़ा भी अलग है मटेरियल भी अलग अलग है तो और डिजाइन भी अलग अलग है खुला भी है टाइट भी है कोर टाइप भी है बहुत सारी किस्में है इसमें कितना डिमांड रहता है बहुत सारी डिमांड है इस साल तो मतलब सर्दी पहले ही आ गई ज्यादा सर्दी हो गई तो इस साल इनशाला मतलब बहुत डिमांड है इसका बाहर से भी लोग आते हैं बाहर से भी लोग आते हैं टूरिस्ट वूरिस्ट वो भी ले जाते हैं मतलब वो कश्मीरी चाहिए हमें वो फेरन वो ले जाते हैं Typically made of wool and adorned with intricate embroidery, fairens are cherished among the men and women both. The artisans, once confined to local markets, now find the demand for their handcrafted fairens, rising domestically and on a global platform also. यहीं विंटेज में काम कर रहा हूँ आज मैं आया था फेरन लेने के लिए मैंने इसका एड देखा था तो मुझे अपने लिए भी लेना था और मुझे बाहर भी भेजना था मेरा भाई वहाँ पे काम कर रहा था उसने मुझे बोला कि मुझे फेरन भेजो और मुझे घर भी भेजने थे दो चार फेरन मुझे घर भी भेजने थे अमंग कश्मीरीज 
it is a thing of pride and adoration. For them, the freedom is time-tested and a unique clothing quintessential to Kashmir region. During a 40-day period of harsh winter, colloquially known as Chilai Kala, Feran becomes the most comfortable and warm attire among Kashmiris. Look, this Feran is one of the most important things in the world. I say that the science has been very good and from every kind of thing, from every kind of thing, from every kind of thing, किस्म किस्म के ड्रेस निकले मगर कश्मीर के ये ऐसा चीज है जो हर लिहाज से सबसे बेहतर निकली दुनिया में ये चीज ऐसी जो कश्मीर में पाई जाती है ऐसी किसी जगह से क्यों नहीं जाती है इसके बहुत बड़े बड़े फायदे हैं। With the popularity of Kashmiri ferries globally, more tourists and merchants are coming to the Union territory to experience the region's culture and lifestyle. The government too is promoting the winter garment locally and internationally, thereby helping foreign artisans and traders grow their businesses. That's all we have for you this week. I'm your host Pratiksha Mishra and it's a goodbye from the entire production team.